This program is designed to provide general information with regards to the subject matters covered. This information is given with the understanding that neither the hosts, guests, sponsors, or station are engaged in rendering any specific and personal medical, financial, legal, counseling, professional service, or any advice. You should seek the services of competent professionals before applying or trying any suggested ideas. Brian, Sebastian, movie reviews and more. Did you like that at the end, Victoria? I knew you did. I did. I was so <laughs> wedding girl. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so I got to start with this because it's been a busy week, and it's been a lot of speaking engagements and everything right. going on. Anyhow, I'm Brian, Sebastian, movie reviews and more, and obviously, usually we stream on Tuesdays, but we're trying to keep our streak of 95 straight shows in a row going. So we had to do today. So the whole thing about this, yes, we're live on IQ247. <laughs> Franklin, Tennessee, streaming on over 100 outlets around the world. And I love this because I've been waiting for this show. This show is built around Doug. And then I said, we got to have Victoria because what was going on with her? And then I'm like, you got to have Sean in because I found him at CES. He's got some great technology. And I'm like, can we make this work? And the answer is, we're in a retrograde. We just have total eclipse of the heart. Mm-hmm. We will make it work. So I got to start off with this because Doug is still trying to get on and doing everything. And as Victoria's mom chimes in, hello, the captain. You know, we have to say these things. So I always say this from California. We're down, I almost said the Donald Beach, Terry, but Sherman Oaks, California. Hi, everybody. One and only, nonstop, Terry Marie with over. She's at 4 million views and counting now. So I'm happy for her on that. Ooh, yes. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> Victoria never knows this number, but she knows. I have to start with her because she's been our long, our long, I thought I could call her our long lost friend, but she's not lost. She's just busy doing a lot of stuff. Yeah. So that singer songwriter, that great actress, that great co-host, and everything like that. And your mom says, Hi, honey. It's Hi, one mom. of those things that it's good to see Victoria Renee because she always has a lot of great things going on, including her trip to Africa that we'll hear about. And she brought someone else on that I didn't know. And this is the fun thing about movie previews and more. You never know who's going to come on at last minute. You never know what it's not going to work. You never know what's going to work until afterwards. So, Michael Sutton, CEO of The Sound of LA, and I can't wait to hear what he has to go on with that. And with that, my new friend, Sean, I love this technology. He's going to talk about what he has there because he's got a great story on why everybody needs this, whether it's women, whether it's simply walking, whether it's me on my my e-scooter, and I love what he's created, and we got to help him get it out there. And I'm going to have him talk with that. And if Sorry Doug to interrupt, Ryan. Go ahead, go ahead, Rebel, go ahead. Doug, we can see you. Can you hear us? Yes, although I have very low volume and I'm trying to fiddle with it on my end. But uh, we'll, I'll, it'll be okay. <laughs> it'll be okay. Everything is going to be just fine. We just wanted to make sure you knew we, were, we could see you. <laughs> we got you, Doug. We can go with it. All right, All right. So this. I'm going to if start you're with happy, Sean. Brian, I'm absolutely thrilled. I am. Because all kinds of chaos goes on, and that's what we strive on. Huh, Victoria? Huh, Victoria? <laughs> we do. Yeah. 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 So, Sean, I got to start off with Sean first, because this is a great technology that everybody has to hear. So, Sean, tell us who you are, what you've created, what you're that CEO and founder of, because I oh like God. this product, and I found it at the CES show, Consumer Electronics Show in January, and I think everybody needs this, especially women. Go ahead, Sean. Take it away. Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me. Um, so basically, uh, Sims Technology. I'm Sean Simbab, the founder and owner, um, www.sims.technology. What I did was I um, invented a personal safety wearable device uh, that clips on the back of you that actually alerts you when someone or something is approaching you from behind. So um, women today that are being assaulted, attacked, approached, um, everything happening to them, 
um, at 45 feet, you'll be alerted that someone's approaching. This device will stop uh, detecting people. At 25 feet, you'll receive an alert that someone's behind you. It'll either go to your iWatch, your ear pods, and it'll let you know. You as the wearer will then turn around and determine whether or not you think if it's a threat or not. If you feel it's a threat, you have SOS on your iPhone or or your your Android phone and or your watch. You hit that. It goes out to your three contacts. Those people automatically get your GPS location and then will actually know that you're in trouble. And we're going to show a trailer of that in a little bit because it's very fascinating. And, and it's been the only one that I've been able to find in the world. Go ahead, Rebel. Uh, I still have no access to that um, trailer, even though it says I have um, a grant. It says it grants access, but when I open it, it says, I'm waiting for it to come up. You don't have permission to access this video. Learn more. Well, while Sean gets that going, we're going to show that trailer. Now, let's talk into Doug, because Doug, it's almost May 6th will be coming up pretty soon. You know, it's a, it's a special day. And Absolutely. So he's a World War II, I got. I do this all off the top of my head. I never use any notes because of things like this. So he's a World War II historian. He's got a bunch of great books out there. One is on Howard Hughes. One is yeah. on, uh, well, yeah, it's fascinating. Uh, mm -hmm. it's really, really good. And then the other one, uh, we talked about a teenage girl in Auschwitz, uh, Basha, I think, Friedlich, Basha. Basha. and the will to live. Yes. Did I get it right? Halfway right? You got it right. Banish, Basha, Anish. Oh, there it is. Basha, mm -hmm. Anish, Friedlich, and the will to live. Whoops, no, that's uh, yeah. Hiroshima. That's also an excellent book if you have another couple of bucks. <laughs> See, he's got a bunch of them. And that's what's fascinating about these because, you know, what happened in Israel, we have to make sure that <clears throat> things aren't going back to the way they used to in a bad way. And that's really, really important on that. Doug, talk about this really quickly, you know, because we're going to come back and talk to you more while Sean's getting the trailer going and you're going to go into Victoria and then Michael. Talk about why May 6th is important. Talk about this book that you can now get on Amazon and in bookstores from around the world. Talk about that. Well, the book is called uh, A Teenage Girl in Auschwitz, Basha Freelich and the Will to Live. It's a true story that uh, was brought to me by a friend of mine who had actually read my book, Surviving Hiroshima, and she happened to know the granddaughter of a Holocaust survivor, Basha Freelich, and she asked if I would be interested in uh, talking to the family. Well, <laughs> you know, for what I do, boy, she couldn't put me in touch fast enough. Basha was a 14-year-old uh, Polish Jewish girl, and the Germans and the SS and the Gestapo came in one day and uh, took her whole family to Auschwitz. She was separated from them immediately. And I, I have to say right up front that the story has a happy ending. It really does. It just takes kind of a rough road to get there. And it, it, it's important to me that people realize this kind of injustice, no matter where it comes from, you know, against Jews or, or anybody, that it, it's intolerable. And we need to be on the lookout, on guard, that that kind of thing just doesn't happen again. And, um, you know, you've heard historians say that history repeats itself. One of my concerns uh, about what's going on today, um, when Hitler took control of Germany, he took control of all of their media. The German people only heard what the Nazis wanted them to hear. And uh, I'm afraid we're coming close to a situation like that today where so much of our media is controlled by so few people who all seem to have the same idea, and that concerns me. And then, and then on um, May 6th, Brian, as you brought it up, is Holocaust Memorial Day. And I want to honor Basha and all of the Jewish people and all of the others who were caught up in the Holocaust because it wasn't only Jews. They were just mostly Jews. But there's homos homosexuals, gypsies, um, you know, just a lot of people who suffered such abuse and, and so many that were killed um, that I, I'm going to take some time to honor Basha and all of them uh, in something that will be coming up soon. Which will lead us to, you know, it's all about that song, A Better Tomorrow. And, you know, 
that monster, which I really like. When she sang that live, you know, at, at the Hudson for us, I'm like, I really like this song. Oh, it was I really do. good. All right, so Victoria, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this stranger named Michael Sutton, the CEO of Sound of LA. Yeah. He's with you. Yeah. Why he's here. a newcomer. <laughs> so, Michael and after, is. And after um, Michael's done talking, we're going to go back into Sean because this leads into everything. Go ahead, Victoria. Okay, got it. Go ahead. You, know I mean? oh, you just you just start singing that tells it all. <laughs> <laughs> so Michael Michael's the head of of my label. He is his label, The Sound of LA, is under Virgin Universal, and um, we have just joined forces, and I'm super excited about it. Um, did I tell you I signed? Brian with the label? No, you never tell me anything. I was ah! find out the hard way. It's all happened so fast. So, yeah. so I, Michael and I and and Anissa signed um, together. And Michael is he's very humble. So I'm gonna give him a little. He <laughs> he was discovered by Stevie Wonder. He's worked with the greatest of all time. He's got huge records is a just a the nicest human being but also oh, just wow. ridiculously talented um and so yeah you, you were signed to Mo how old were you? you signed to motown i was um you me tell my age i was no I, actually i was i was about 24 i think 20 22 24. so awesome and i was there for six years six years motown. yeah so so brian so my i'm moving my music all under to i'm re-releasing a better tomorrow i'm re-releasing monster i'm re-releasing my music to uh to the sound of la to to my to the label and um so it'll be all new new stuff and we're working on an album right now which i'm very excited about it's called secrets uh the single is called secrets and it's gonna be awesome and we're making a video i'm making a video to monster on this new technology that's like avatar-esque right like you the suits with the dots and all that <laughs> places green screen um and it's just i'm so excited about that because there haven't been that many people to have that yet uh the way that this is done it's got like um like it's, it's live rendered so you can see myself as whatever i mean make it up i'm like i'm throwing fish i'm throwing a jelly bean you know like make it whatever it is the possibilities are endless, which is a little overwhelming, but it's nice to have variety. So, uh, yeah, so I'm super excited about re-releasing my new music, getting videos out, and uh, doing this album. It's going to be so fun. A lot of great things going on with Victoria. I can tell you a little bit about myself. I signed with Motown, and uh, I think I was about 24 years old, and I uh, ended up working as soon as I got there. Uh, I didn't realize the talent that they said I had. I started working right away. I think the first artist I worked with was Bette Midler. That was the first out, out, outside project that they were working on. Even though it never came out, it was put in the can. But uh, we did two songs on Bette Midler, and then it went from, uh, from that to Michael Jackson, uh, um, see Dinah Ross, Dinah Ross, Smokey Robinson, mm -hmm. um, the originals. And then I did some outside projects after I left Motown, Dionne Warwick, uh, Sherilyn, Shake It Up Tonight. Um, just tons of stuff. Um, uh, Kanye, Chuck Brown. What'd you say? Kanye. <laughs> oh, Ka oh, Kanye. The, the biggest hit I had, I think, it's probably the biggest one was uh, Kanye West and Jay Z. I uh, was guess who's back on the the Scarface album, big hip hop hit. Yeah. So, it was the Source Award number one record for that year. It, it was uh, the award it was for the uh, it was the most sampled, uh, most sampled in history. I think it's called Guess Who's Back. Yeah, so, so, so I'm gonna tie I'm gonna tie all of this back. So Victoria, which leads to why Doug has written books on that and what the technology that Sean has created that you and Terry need. Mm -hmm. Go back to why a better tomorrow is, which led up to a lot of things, even though you were doing many things to what's going on right now. And then Sean, we're gonna show that trailer and lead back to why women, specifically Victoria and Terry, these because there's just too many weird stalkers out there. Mm, yeah. That's true. true. <laughs> I, I, I pity the poor man who tries to mess with Terry. I don't know what? if you have seen the strength that this woman has. She's oh like, oh, oh, oh. Uh, thank you, Victoria. I love them. She works hard on them. Yeah. 
Uh, but you know, just, just in case, uh, but yeah. Uh, so a better tomorrow, uh, I released, you know, a few years ago and, and nothing really happened with it. And then two years ago, uh, it got picked up by CNN and used as their whole like promotion platform and partnership with Rolex for a uh, call to earth, a program that they put on to just you know, make the world better and, uh, showing you, you know, life and maybe what happens in the future. So, so I started getting an influx of comments on YouTube. I saw that I didn't realize it was on 13 times an hour in on CNN international for two years straight 24 seven. And I was just, it gave the song a whole new life. And now I've just uh, been really grateful to connect with the people that it connected with. And uh, I'm excited to re-release it because it's just finally getting all the love that you know deserves. I say it deserves. deserves. It was. I feel like I, I'm proud of that song, and I hope that other people feel the same way about it. That I. Well, we're we're proud of you uh, because of what you all the stuff that you have. And we're going to come back to you because Sean's trailer is ready, and I want everybody to see this because of safety issues and everything that's going on. And then we're going to talk about what you're doing now after Terry introduced yourself. Sean, take it away. So, uh, you guys have the trailer, right, Brian? I believe. Yep. Okay. She's gonna show Great. it right now. Yep. All right, so Sean, when I saw this, I went nuts. I thought, I gotta have this. I can't wait to tell the girls about this because when you have 12 co hosts and they're all women, except for me and Howard and now Jeremy, that's important because there's a lot of stalking, especially in our business. Never mind CEO females and things like that. I'm just looking at the female aspect, but in general, everybody needs this. Sean, tell your story and how and why you created this. Yeah, so so basically this this was came to fruition. I was a, a correctional officer for about 14 years, uh, state of Rhode Island. Um, I was actually assaulted from behind and I ended up with a traumatic brain injury. Um, and then during my recovery, um, I was walking on a bike path one day, listening to music, you know, talking on the phone and a bicyclist from behind came from behind me. Didn't hear him say on your left and he ended up hitting me. So at that point I said, you know, there's gotta be something out there that, you know, maybe alert you when someone's approaching you from behind. Wow. There was nothing that that was out there. Um, my partner and I, you know, started talking to patent lawyers and uh, we ended up writing some patents. We ended up getting awarded our first patent. I believe it was in uh, 2018. We now have three patents. Um, the device is completed. Um, we're now going to do a Kickstarter campaign that's going to launch, uh, launch on April 16th. And we're looking to go to market um, Q4 this year or, or Q1 of 2025. So, you know, Victoria, I know you mentioned earlier, you know, Terry's mus muscles and stuff like that. You know, I, I look at it from this, you know, perspective. You can have mace, you can have all of these things that are out there. But if you don't see it coming from behind, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, there's a problem. And, and at 25 feet, what happens with this device is, again, you start getting alerted. And then it also captures 15 seconds of frames, 15 frames per second of the images that go to the cloud. So if, if you are assaulted and attacked and you can't, you know, think, defend yourself, you still have the cloud backup. And then also oh. your three, your three contacts also have your GPS location. That's, That's awesome. Wait, does it do that the whole time? You said it, when does it start taking footage? It'll start to when, as the person's approaching or the object's approaching at 15, at, at, at 25 feet, that's when it, the, the device will wake up and start, um, start capturing images. That's and awesome. I have a question about it. And so let's say you, I mean, like, obviously I've got um, a alert system in my car, but let's say something happens and like I have car problems and somebody uh, approaches the car. Can I alert it 
manually? I mean, yeah, because uh, uh, yeah, yeah. uh huh. So, at any can... time, you can alert this manually to get your SOS. I can do it right now and it'll go to my three contacts. Um, mm -hmm. again, it's more or less in remote areas. You know, if, mm -hmm. if you're out training, you're walking alone, you're, you're, mm -hmm. you're doing things, you're not going to wear it, you know, in New York City, but you know, m most of the time, like I said, this has so many use cases that, it, you know, th there's, it's unbelievable. Well, you'd be, people will be surprised. I've had friends that have been attacked in broad daylight in shopping centers. Me too. I mean, Me too. so it's not, it doesn't really matter because people, you're so people, it's weird that people just don't pay attention. So people get attacked with other people around and people don't do anything. So I don't get why people walk around with headphones on like at night, you know, yeah, right. on their uh -huh. phone. I'm just like, you have no idea what's happening around you. That's so mm -hmm. Well, it, it comes down to situational awareness and people become so complacent nowadays. You know, they, mm -hmm. they take the, they take the same route every day they're going and they just, you know, they're on the phone and, you know, before, before, you know, it, something happens and, and, you know, this device will prevent that. It's actually, you know, whether or not you think you need it or you don't, you know, and it may not happen to you. It just takes that one, one time. And, and, and if you get yeah. the alert and you're able to hit SOS and defend yourself. And like I said, if you have a knife or mace or, or a birdie, you're able to use it. But if you get caught from behind, you know, you know, yeah. Sean, I think that that device is right now so critically important. Yeah. You know, as a historian, I compare the past to the present and project into the future. And our current crime situation is absolutely ghastly. Mm -hmm. I was watching some material recently, and it was women speaking about their fear to go outside, whether taking a walk at night in the city or, or a walk in the park during daylight. There is, this is, well, it's no surprise that this is not the same country that it was, uh, you well, know. And, so. and that's the thing. And that's why we're bringing, trying to bring, you know, awareness to everybody, trying to get some influencers out there. We were at CES. That's where I met Brian. I mean, we were, we got ranked, I think, five out of uh, 300 companies as being new technology. So, you know, everything's coming together. Um, like I said, we're doing a Kickstarter campaign. We'll be at the um, Boston Marathon on Monday, um, you know, just bringing awareness to our company. And then I'll be at the Boston Expo, Outdoor Expo, uh, April 27th and 28th as well. I think, for, I think for anyone who is an at risk person because they're elderly or they have a physical problem, to me, that sounds absolutely vital. And for the rest of us, too, frankly. Mm -hmm. well, and, you know, it, we're the first proactive device. Like I said, you know, you're going to get an alert. It's going to let you know. So, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, our, our main goal was women, college students. I mean, every day you turn on the news, college students every day. So, you know, we're trying to get into the colleges. And, and basically we're just trying to get, you know, uh, our pre-orders up. We're trying to bring awareness, like I said. So that way we could just come to market and, and, and let this thing take off because it's, it's very crucial and critical right now. Is this available now, Sean? Is this available now? No, we're doing pre-orders in the Kickstarter. Like I said, it, we're, we're, we'll have it available Q4 this year, maybe December, uh, if not, you know, beginning of uh, 2025. Awesome. I'll, I'll keep you guys abreast of that night because I keep my eye on what Sean's doing. <laughs> I told him the first week of January, like, how soon can I get one of these? Because no one knows about this great product. And I hate when we have to wait, but I understand why we have to wait. But you can see everybody how important it is. And I was itching, but I'm like, Sean, when can I have you come on? Perfect timing for that. Perfect timing for Victoria Song. And obviously, Michael, welcome to Movie Reviews and More, where we have over 35 million views and counting. It's actually, the number is 46 today, Terry. The last three days straight, we hit 40, well, 40 plus million. And so, Terry, tell him who you are and why things are important to you these days. Um, my name is uh, Terry Marie, and I have been with Brian since 2014, doing red carpet hosts, interviewing celebrity interviews. Um, I'm also a fitness competitor. Um, I took a hiatus for four years, but because well, I didn't, I think because of COVID, then I just haven't been able to get back on stage because I've been taking care of my elderly mom. But I have picked a show to do in July, so I'm back in training. I'm back on the diet, so I'm back on that train, which I'm excited to do. Um, I also. Um, um, in the medical field where I work with uh, orthopedics and um, trainer athletic trainers um, with uh, bracing and support, if anybody knows that. Um, and then what else do I do? Then I do, and I dabble in art, um, which I need to focus a little bit more on that. So I do have a project that I'm still, that I've been working on for a long time that I need to get back to. Um, but uh, this last year has been kind of 
kind of interesting because I am I moved in to take care of my elderly mom who has you know congestive heart failure who's who's handicapped and um, it's been very humbling. Um, so as you said that that device might be something that my mom can use because you know um, sometimes she's a, you know who you know who knows what happens especially if you're handicapped and elderly. So I see a lot of uses. And Sean, I'll keep the Kickstarter going on our end because the, the last one we had for SkyTech, uh, which was a device where you could actually cover your mouth like this and no one could hear your conversations because mm -hmm. uh, the CEO, uh, Nicholas, uh, came from Airbus. So he was always outside. He always had a lot of calls that he was talking to a high level people and people around him and he couldn't make those, those calls like that. So these are why I love going to CES. These are why I love finding these brands. And when it comes back to authors like this, like Doug, Doug, you've got to give your back history. You came from the entertainment industry. You worked on some iconic TV <laughs> shows. Talk about your TV shows as you were dabbling in writing, because it's fascinating of where you are today, being that historian. Well, I started as a television uh, director in, in the Midwest uh, and then headed off uh, for uh, Hollywood with the dream of doing sitcoms. Well, you know, that's a little harder than just having a dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. now, the key to that, like everything else in life, I believe, is to keep going and not quit. And if you do that, then you're going to end up somewhere. And, and so I, I did relatively quickly uh, move into the uh, sitcom world as a production manager, not a director. But uh, as life went on, I, I moved on and, uh, you know, up the food chain and got to do very some very interesting things. Uh, I, uh, hold on, Doug. Tell them the shows you worked on. That's most important, too. Go ahead. I was just going to say, on an optimistic note here, the best show, the nicest show I ever worked on was a series called The Facts of Life, if anyone oh, remember that. Wow. That yeah. was a show that was so nice that it was painfully nice almost. The cast was nice. The, the writers, the producers, everybody on that show was so nice. And it was a very entertaining show. And I thought, you know, I'm pretty lucky to be on that show. At the same time, I was doing another show, uh, which was uh, kind of like, uh, you know, being tortured by Nazis. So uh, the two sort of uh, balanced each other out during that period of my life. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I had a very entertaining career. I, I worked mostly in comedy uh, toward the end. Um, I did, you know, I think over a thousand stand-up comedy shows. I did over, well, no, it's over a thousand comedy shows total uh, of all varieties. And, and, I, and I, that was the world I loved. I enjoyed that very, very much. And I did the pilot for Silver Spoons. I did, um, um, sure, I can't even remember my career. Um, <laughs> because you've done so much stuff, that's why. Um it was it was all interesting i loved you know it, it's of course naturally it's very very difficult um but i loved every minute of it at one point i was the vice president of production um of a company that made primarily um company shows and i i also personally produced as much as i could and i had a 20 show a year directing contract but at that time i was producing one show in los angeles one show in New York, and another one that traveled all over the country, all at the same time. Uh, so if you enjoy sleeping or eating, that's not the ideal career, but I enjoyed it very, very much. Did you mean for them to all happen at the same time? Like, or was that a surprise? I tried my best to avoid, <laughs> to avoid <laughs> I this. I feel I, like that's not usually how that works. <laughs> yeah, um, awesome. I was on location somewhere. I don't even remember where it was. And the president of the company that I uh, worked for showed up one day and he says, hi, hey, I made a couple new deals. Oh, great. One of them is for a special in Jamaica. Well, that sounds good. And the other is for one in Vancouver. I said, ah, that's really good. Unfortunately, they're both the same week. Well, you've got to be kidding. <laughs> really? So if you could imagine shipping equipment and crews and everything all over the place. And what ended up happening was I went to Jamaica uh, with my traveling crew, set up 
the Jamaica show. And after I shot the first part of that, I hopped on an airplane, went to Vancouver and picked up a Canadian crew and shot that show while they were still in Jamaica finishing the other one. So, um, I, I, I enjoyed it, but, um, it was um, interesting, very interesting. Hey, Doug, so when Roz told me how old you was, I'm like, he can't be. He can't be. He looks too good to be that age. Do you, <laughs> mind, do you mind telling everybody how old you are? I don't mind a bit. I'm 73 years old, and um, considering a lot of stuff, maybe <laughs> maybe I should look worse. But, you know, I don't smoke. I don't drink. And... Um, but thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the compliment, Brian. No, I really it's fascinating because it's, you know, there's not a lot of icons left, and I consider you to be one of those. These are the important, the history of what everybody's doing. You can see this show is going to start off where? And we don't even have four of our other co-hosts on. They're busy doing stuff. Uh, you know, they were coming on. Howard, you know, I got, Brian, do you mind if I go dancing? No, go have some fun. You know, yeah. Rachel's, you know, Rachel's cooking barbecue or something right now, drinking bourbon. And so she was going to come on. She's not here. You know, so I'm, anytime I can get Victoria, it's good. So, Michael, going to you, it was an yeah. honor and pleasure to meet the Funk Brothers. I met 12 out of the 15 or 12 out of the 17 until this day. Man, when I'm listening to Stevie Wonder, I was made to love her and yeah. things like that. Thank you. I'm, I'm just happy that you're still alive and that you're there to be in that room. Because, you know, we don't have a lot. Every time I went into Stevie Wonder, I'm like, Stevie, it's me, Brian. I, I was made to love you. And he starts laughing. And by the way, I say this. Yes, I still think Stevie can drive because I know yeah. he can see it partially. He can. And I tell everybody. <laughs> I sure know. Can. See? He can. Yeah, I know he right can. From he can the with Stevie, right. sometimes we'd be at, like, at a convention and uh, and if you walk up, if he knows you, if you walk up to him, he could kind of just feel who you are. Mm -hmm. So I would come up to him, I'd be about five, maybe about five, by the time I got about five inches away, he'd say, hi, Michael. Just like that, you know. Mm -hmm. That sixth sense that he had. It's yeah. awesome, yeah. And Sean, one of the people I was thinking of was Stevie Wonder. I don't know if you remember me telling you that because Stevie yeah. loves going out to shows and being out there. I'm like, Man, yeah. how does he do this? He's been doing it for all these years, but here's someone yeah. who's iconic where everybody wants to gravitate around him. But again, as Doug was saying, and as Sean knows, both has changed. And yeah. he, no matter what, we still have to be careful because it all it takes is just one guy. Just yeah. one guy, you know. You mentioned I, I, Funk, you mentioned Funk, you mentioned Funk Brothers too, you know. Funk Brothers, there's only I think it's one left, uh Jack Astrid. Mm -hmm. Before percussionist, yeah. But I had not anybody yeah, I had the opportunity to work with uh, Eddie Bongo with the original Funk Brothers and of course James Jameson Jr. and and for, yeah. for anybody who doesn't know who the Funk Brothers are, they were the only musicians who played on every single Motown album. Yeah. Every mm -hmm. single one. When, when they started off, they were not interested in doing this because they were jazz musicians that night. Yeah, they didn't care right. about oh, Marvin Gaye. Marvin Gaye was, was jazz, right? Marvin Gaye was jazz. Mm -hmm. jazz. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the Funk Brothers. So, Sean, when I'm thinking of people in your technology, these are, that was running through my head when I first met you. I was like, man, this is a great technology and was great having the idea. Talk about being at CES. Victoria, we're coming back to you with your new song. We're going to play something. So oh. talk about being at CES. What was that like for you? Oh, it was amazing. I mean, listen, we're, we're, we come from the smallest state. We're, we're in Rhode Island. And uh, like I said, you know, for us to get there at CES, we got a booth. We were down at, um, you know, the Venetian Hall. And, you know, we, we, we got a lot of interviews, Brian. I, I mean, we were, you know, on the CES broadcast. I mean, for us, it's, you know, again, you know, we're friends and family uh, fundraiser. We basically have no debt on the company. So, you know, we're basically trying to make it here and um, get it out there to the public and, and, again, bring awareness. And, and you know, I think we did a great job. We were published in over like 45 different publications throughout the world um, from CES. I mean, we've had great reviews. I mean, you know, everyone wants this in their hands. It's just, you know, we went from prototype to MVP, which you saw, Brian, at CES. And now we're in final production of our device. So we'll get some testing done on that and then we'll get it in the hands of the public. All right, Rebel. Let's play something. Let's surprise. Let's see which one this is. She's getting ready, Victoria. I might have to make you sing. Like <laughs> you Expect nothing less, Brad. Why she's getting that ready? Talk about your trip to Africa real quick. Go ahead. 
Oh, the trip to Africa. Where do I begin? Okay. It was the most incredible thing maybe I've ever experienced. My my producer uh, for musical and a, a film that I just did called uh, L.A. Grit. No relation to True Grit, um, Brian. But uh, so he took 11 of us out to Africa and we just, we... We went to Tanzania. We stayed at what was Lil Kim Kim, Lil Chim Chim, and then we went to Faru Faru, and it was just. And then we went to uh, Zanzibar, but it it was just like unbelievable. I mean, we saw eight lions before we even got to our bungalow. <laughs> like just whoa, you know. And like we have to walk the forest because the monkeys will come inside and mess everything up. And I think monkeys to them are like pigeons. To, like we kept wondering, you know, we're like, oh, this is gonna be so fun. I'm gonna make a friend with a monkey. And they're like, please don't, please don't do that. And we're like, oh, okay. Because they'll come and they'll just come keep coming back and take people's leftovers. But uh our the producer our Scott has them. Oh Scott, what up Scott? Um he he just the he got us the most beautiful place that he took the whole the whole, we got the whole resort both time it was just it was just amazing we saw so many cool things we met a tribe we met the Maasai tribe and that was just wow I mean it, it's I learned so much from them I don't even it's just a lot it was it was um, a, a incredible it, trip so Terry here's the thing this is how I find out what Victoria is doing. <laughs> she, doesn't, she doesn't say where she's doing what she's doing, which is smart. That's a safe, that's a good safety protocol. But at the same time, I can't even keep track of where she is. I thought she got kidnapped in Africa. I'm like, is she really there? I'm again, Sean, I'm thinking about your device. I'm like, because I know Victoria, everybody, she could just be talking and people just come up to her. Even I'm concerned as her friend who comes around her sometimes. But I'm like, oh, there's a picture, a little picture of Link. So I know she's in good hands. <laughs> <True>. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's what it was. All right, so that's Victoria, we might have we might be having a problem playing something, Rebel. Oh. I can hear it a little bit. No, 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 no. All right, so Rebel, stop there. Yeah. Okay, Victoria, I love doing this. You're going to sing a little bit of this. You I always put you, this? Yeah, you're going to okay. sing Monster, because I can't hear the song. So I want Doug yeah. to hear it. I want Sean to hear it. Sure. Yes, okay. Sir. All right, go ahead. This song is definitely better done with the track, but I'll sing a little bit of it. Okay, so we're... <laughs> Uh, you want us to beatbox for you? Yeah, I feel like it's in the middle. That's all. Um, so it's a weird song to start off. Don't be calling Miss Mary Mac. You mess with my love, so you should go pack. Cause it's Wednesday. Oh, we were pink and not black. But bye, 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 boy. There's no coming back. Hey boy, you give your love and so cheap. Hey boy, trust me if you told me I response. I'm gonna self love myself. Hey boy, there's no point in Loki. Hey boy, there's no point in you and me. I I'm gonna self love myself. I finally climb my mountain. And I came back a monster. Oh, yeah, yeah. I came back a monster. <laughs> okay. okay. We got to we gotta, we, we gotta sing the song that led up to that for you. You got to sing it better tomorrow because okay, yeah. again, it's so good. I was like, I don't think I can do this one a cappella, really. All right, go for it. Go. <laughs> okay. Um, there be no sadness to cry. There be no selfish to lie. There be no reason for crying. There be no empty, no I. See it when I close my eyes. Peace on earth and peace of mind. Let it go. 
We have to respond to let me so teach it something more than what we know. Give it what, give it some room to grow. I can see a better tomorrow. Beautiful. You know, CNN is not going to pick up anything with just some girl next to her's voice. She truly does have a beautiful, wonderful voice. And awesome. when I go on to her site, I listen to stuff because I just love hearing it, especially when I close my eyes. And so Victoria's not going to talk about some some of the stuff that she's done, but I will. So <laughs> when you were when you went and you were on stage, what was it, Cinderella? You were playing. Yeah, Cinderella. Yeah. So Talk fun. about that. That was one of the greatest experiences of my life, honestly. I I go to the audition and I, you know, moved out here. You, audition after it's oh, you get one job for a hundred auditions, maybe, right? Usually. And it was one of my first that I've done. And I, I went out there. There's a billion people. I'm like, I'm gonna go home. This is gonna be my whole day. Uh, I'm not going to get the job. And I just kept going and they did singing first. And then, and then there's like 25 people and then there's 15 people and then there's 10 people. And I'm like, Oh my God, I'm going to book this. <laughs> and then I did. And uh, it, there was uh, 500 girls that came out for just, just the role of Cinderella It's a 60 person cast, but just for that, it was crazy. And I just was like, it was just, the story itself was a Cinderella story. And uh, it was just incredible. And I proved to myself, you know, everybody wants that job. But then once you get it, you're like, oh, there's a lot of money on my shoulders. You know, I, I have to carry a whole show. This is. And so, like, knowing that I can take on challenges like that and be a good leader to the cast and to the crew and the and everybody else and and be able to handle that workload is one of the most fulfilling proud moments of my life honestly uh because i just i proved to myself like oh you, you can do it you know and so ever since that i i mean and the, this the show is so good it's just such a good show the rogers and hammerstein cinderella is just so much fun just the people that watched it afterwards, the things that they would say, and like some of the actors I got to work with were just incredible, just so good. Like I learned so much from them. You know, it was just, it was a wonderful experience. All right, I'm talking about So mildly. Terry, talk about this. Isn't it great to see our original, because Terry and Victoria are my original co-hosts. They met at the same time. <laughs> back in 2014, 2015. Yeah, yeah. And, and look where everybody is today. I know. And so this is what I like about this because I went back to look at some older interviews because I was sharing stuff because this is the key to what you know why we have over 35 million views and counting, really 46 million views and counting. It's because when I go by and I take an old video and I share it, I put it on 13 different sites. That means 13 different eyeballs where someplace around the world are seeing different things. And they do they like that. All of a sudden the numbers jump up. How do I know? Because where's my piece of scribbly case piece piece of paper that I have? that I have the numbers on. But it's one of those things where I could keep track of all this stuff and all of a sudden they move. And then I went back and I'm like, Terry, talk about the time that you interviewed her at the NAMM convention. Oh, yeah. Wasn't that oh, great that to our coast? I was, And then we had no idea she was going to sing, sing on stage with uh, Garbage. Back, or who knew? Yeah, it was awesome. Oh, wait. Actually, that reminds me. Brian, I always forget who was there. <laughs> I say, I say for I everybody know. was there. From <laughs> Nina, from Nina Strauss, uh, was it Nina Ford? Was Ford was there? Uh, uh, was Lita Ford. Everybody was there. You just Lita didn't Ford. know because you were in the back. That tell was them, so. Tell them who you tell them who you sang with first of all, and Terry was pulling the blinds. <laughs> oh yeah, I sang with Beyonce's house band, which was so sick. It. I, mm -hmm. how, how do you? How do I follow up with that? Like that. <laughs> You can't play with anybody after you play with them. These people, they are incredible. I go, so I was asked to sing Only Happy When It Rains because the lead singer of Garbage was getting an award that night. Mm -hmm. And it didn't dawn on me until after I performed that I just performed a cover in front and for the artist. That's that was awesome. That's what I, I mean. I, I'm a big fan of Garbage. So that was, that are was. You? 
she I was, was so proud of you. She was yeah. so sweet. Um, yeah, so I, I went on stage and I sang that and I we had rehearsed we had one rehearsal, one rehearsal. Uh and it's a very small we I think we were in the base, we were at the basement, I think. I don't know if any musicians. Um and we were in a very, very tiny room, like just a small room doing our rehearsal. And this other girl comes in and she's gonna sing with the next. She has a rehearsal with the next. And she was singing uh cherry pie whatever song mm -hmm. i didn't realize it was actually lita ford i was like oh my god she sounds just like the original artist <laughs> like but in mouth i'm so glad i did it, it was, was lita ford i was like oh she walked in like <laughs> she knows what she's doing here i was like she was the first female on the cover of the rolling stones that's like she's a legend she's well here's, here's what happens is that Victoria will be backing up, and all of a sudden she backs into the, the right person that you need to meet. And then that's what happens. And then she's done that gig, and she's on to the next gig. And I'm like, oh, she did this one? She didn't tell me this. She's not good at doing that. So that's why I got to keep, I, I feel like I'm stalking my friend. I got to no, see what I she's doing it. next. <laughs> I hey. just, I like staying busy, and I, I just, I just like to, uh, you know, it, it's hard work doing this. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got to get momentum and, and build it up. And, it, you know, you have to, we all have light bills and you have to work on the other stuff. And then you have to do the admin. And it's a lot. And that's why I'm so very, very grateful that I have Michael and Anissa now that are helping, me, like, my life, you know, and manage all of this stuff that I can't do on my own and they could do better than I did anyway, <laughs> you know. Um, and I can just focus on music and and doing what I love doing. So, Doug, this is this is her mom. I wish her mom was <laughs> in Minneapolis, and I like her mom. So we got about four minutes left. So, Michael, talk about why the sound of LA is important, followed by Victoria with your social media links. Go ahead, Michael, and you're on mute. Yeah, the sound of it. We actually started because we really want to uh, give independent artists the same feeling that they if they were with a major label. And so we started, uh, my, my wife uh, and partner, Anissa uh, Sutton, we started, she started the magazine, Pump It Up magazine, uh, I think in 2015, based uh, just around helping independent artists. Matter of fact, the theme song is uh, is uh, reaching for the stars while standing on earth. And so we, we always wanted to support the independent artists and give them the feeling that they would, had a major campaign behind them. And so the sound of LA, that's kind of our goal to really take artists to the next level, independent artists to the next level. Make them get the feeling that they're, they have a home where they, they're not uh, just a number on a label, but also they have a full um, full um, team behind them to take them to the next level and the goals, reach the goals that they want to reach. And uh, we're proud to have Victoria, an artist like Victoria, because we feel she's a superstar, which we'll see that probably the next uh, the next year you guys will see her just spread all over the world. And so that's that's the goal right now. And that's kind of our goal with South of LA. We have a lot of, uh, lot of potential. Yeah. I love that magazine, and, and that that reminds me, Victoria. Really quickly, talk about the the pump it up profile. There, talk about that. Oh, that's, that's the cover girl right there. I should have grabbed my magazine. Shoot, I have a physical one. Okay, I'll get it later. But I have uh, you, know, you, you have one. Mark? It was so much fun. I we I just I did this shoot, and then I did the interviews with Anissa. She sent me a bunch of questions, and it was really. <coughs> nice to have that as a questionnaire because it made me look intrinsically in a way that i haven't maybe in a really long time not with who i am now and uh and it was just it was such a therapeutic and and great exercise for me and i just i felt very grateful for you know sometimes we don't remember to reflect on how far we've come from mm -hmm. You know, and and it was just it was it was a great experience and I'm super grateful and I, I love the spots that you I'm, it was it was awesome I'm very very give honored. Me, give me social media links for everybody. Social media, Victoria Renee Hand across the board. Okay, Sean, real quick, why should people uh, go and support the Kickstarter? Really important. Uh, personal safety. Big, big problem today. And, uh, you know, go to our website, www.sims.technology. You can read about it. You can see the MSRP, when we'll be launching, all updates. Um, personal safety is uh, huge today. Absolutely. Doug, give your social media leaks if you remember. And also, 
that book, A Teenage Girl in Auschwitz, Barf Clegas and the Will to Live. And also this one, Surviving Hiroshima, Young Woman's Story. Yeah, those are, uh, those are the uh, unintentional uh, twin books on World War II, Eastern and West Pacific and uh, European wars. I didn't intend it that way, but when a good story comes, I take it. And uh, they're incredible stories about incredible people, which is absolutely what I'm looking for. Uh, Basha was absolutely amazing and, uh, you know, doesn't come any better than that. And in the same thing, surviving Hiroshima, the, the woman who is the centerpiece of that story, she was a young woman. Uh, she got an atomic bomb dropped on her. You know, that's not a kind of thing anybody can put on their resume. So, uh, you know, she, uh, remarkable, another remarkable woman. Absolutely. Terry Marie, social media links. Um, I'm on uh, all platforms under nonstop Terry Marie. And with that, thank you everybody for coming on the show. You're Everybody's welcome. always welcome to come back. Michael, Sean, got to have you back because we want to follow up with your Kickstarter. Doug, any that we still got more books to talk about with you. I'm going to book something later for you, Victoria. I got to track you down. And she's <laughs> not, <laughs> is not going anywhere. She's not going anywhere. So what I always say, have a good night tonight, a better day tomorrow. You see someone without a smile, please give them one of yours because the world truly needs it. Right, Doug? I'm Brian Sebastian. This is Movie Reviews and More, and we will see you next week.